Welcome to the dark forest Jackie and her pals will never bore us Shameless confessions About our obsessions Will make us laugh and smile So let's explore the dark forest And dork down for a while Hi Rangers, it's me, Jackie Cation Welcome to the dork forest It's 2024. Let's do this. Here's the credits, of course. Mike Rickberg sang that song at the beginning, and he wrote that song, and he sang it with Sarah Cohen, his wife, and he will sing the Mexican hat dance at the end of the program. Also, Patrick Brady still putting this together, video, audio, all of it. He's amazing. So, and Vilmos doing JackieCationStore.com. Squarespace is doing the regular Jackie Cation page, and I'm thinking of moving the Dork Forest and DorkForest.com away from WordPress because it's driving me nuts. But those are the credits. But if you go to JackieCation.com, you can get Dork Forest merch. You can get my stand-up merch. You can get my stand-up CDs and DVDs, which you'd have to have uh, devices for those. Uh, you can also see videos and find out any number of things. I have another podcast called The Jackie and Lori Show, but The Dork Forest is the flagship 18th year. We're doing it, you guys. You can go to my Bandcamp or my YouTube for extra content. Please donate is what I'm saying. It's 2024, and I think we've been in this long enough. Why don't you guys, everybody send me 100 bucks? That's what I'd like you to do. You can PayPal me. You There's links all over the pages. You can Venmo me at Jackie Cation. You can find me at a stand-up show and uh, hand me a sweaty wad of 20s. Do something. But I love doing the show. I would love uh, to make some money is what I'd like to do. In other news, I'm sure there's more things that I should talk about, but I can't think of them. But let's listen to who's going to dork out about something because that's my favorite part. Thanks for listening, you guys. You're all great. Let's get into the show. I'm not going to feel bad about holding this cup of coffee in my hand as I intro my my guest for this week. Welcome to the Dork Forest Rangers. With me, Mr. Connor McLaughlin, who uh, won the lottery of email, and because uh, anybody could be on the show, but you just have the scheduling is the hardest. Connor McLaughlin, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me, Jackie. Yeah, this was a really great set of happenstance. Yeah, you emailed me like a half an hour ago. I was like. I need an episode. The woman who I was supposed to record with, I'm a lovely woman, clearly not working out. Uh, we'll do it again. And I was like, okay, I have a list as long as my arm, or there's the squeaky wheel that just came in my email. Connor, you enjoy coffee, and you were willing to wait while I went and made some coffee. All right. You are at Coffee with Dr. Connor, C O F F E E W I T H D R C O N O R. And that'll be in the notes. And uh, you do sort of a, it's, it's a, it's a new, like you have a job, but then you mm-hmm. also have this sort of new hobby within your job of introducing and talking about coffee. Yeah. What? Okay. I don't, I have had a <laughs> coffee. I've had a coffee. I've had two coffee dorks on before one, mm-hmm. a guy who owned a coffee roaster in Seattle. Okay. And it was one, it was when I was trying to do, I was trying to do destination dork forests where I would go to people's places and then just sort of carry a thing and interview them. And, uh, that was, uh, that didn't, that didn't take, there's probably three or four episodes. There was a train episode. The guy never turned the train on, but I did learn a lot about, uh, toy trains. Uh, and then the, uh, the coffee one, which was loud because yeah. there was a lot of grinding going on. And then the only other, the other episode about coffee that people might want to know about is, um, Andy Kindler. Andy mm-hmm. Kindler is a coffee nerd and has one of those bulbous things that you pour and then you pour and then you pour. You know <laughs> what I'm talking about? Uh, I think so. It's probably one of a couple of things. And <laughs> I've probably seen whatever it is you're referring <laughs> to. I probably have seen it and had coffee from it. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Well, let's start with the beginning. What, uh, like, I know that I, my brothers to this day, and I'm in my fifties say, you're old enough to drink coffee. Uh, <laughs> cause uh, I'm the youngest. And then the other thing they say is when I drink coffee, cause I get it with either whole milk or cream in it. Mm. They're like, why don't you just get a chocolate milk? What, why would you, that's not how adults drink coffee. They drink it black. And, uh, so there's some mocking happening in my family about coffee. What is your family dynamic with coffee? Is there one? Uh, yeah. So 
I I think like most people, so I was born in the 80s. I'm, you know, an early 80s kid. Uh, my parents were born in the 50s. My parents are like post-war babies. Uh, so we had Folgers. And I thought that tasted Ooh. terrible <laughs> without, you know, cream and sugar <laughs> and basically tasting like a candy bar. Uh, so that yeah. was what I thought coffee <laughs> was for uh, a very long time. Uh, when I met the person who is now my spouse. Um, she had previously been employed at Williams-Sonoma and had, you know, this magical coffee set up with a grinder and a French well. press. And it just blew my mind <laughs> that coffee, like, could be good. Yeah. And so yeah, that that's amazing. kind of set me okay. off and running uh, about almost right, well, 20 years uh, ago. Do you still... Does- that was tw- almost 20 years ago. And does she still have that setup? Does she still enjoy that setup? And uh, what was, was it a William Sonoma, like Keurig or something? No, it was, uh, she had a, a French press that was just like a glass kind of cylinder that you dump the coffee oh, in and right, then pour right. hot water on for a couple of minutes and then press. And she was the first person Plunger. that I ever, yeah. And she was the first person that I had ever met who had their own coffee grinder. Uh, we still have it uh, right now. It's a it's a backup uh, because I have just gone way off the deep end and upgraded our home kit pretty uh, extensively. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, I thought you were going to say what I said because I have a coffee grinder and mm-hmm. I have this to say: it's not a backup. It's up high. It's up high <laughs> where I never use it. Um, I do. I here's I'm gonna I'm gonna before we get into your coffee thing because mm-hmm. you brought up coffee. And this podcast in the 11th hour is really about me. Uh, I have a coffee that I had in Hoi An, Vietnam. Mm. And I was like, this is delicious. Could I, is there chocolate in this? And they're like, no, there's no chocolate in it. Turns out there's a little bit of chocolate in it. And I've always (laughs) been a snob about flavored coffees until the introduction of this item right here which I Mm. get mailed to me every two years, 20 pounds at a crack. So uh, I have 20 of these in my Mm -hmm. freezer. And uh, I just, uh, I I sometimes make Vietnamese coffee. And sometimes I just put two of Cafe Bustella espresso and one of those. And then I drip it up and then I drink it uh, hot in a pint glass or with ice. So now you know what I sort of have what do you have uh too much uh probably uh (laughs) i have uh one of those sort of small bookshelves that's really designed for like dvd collections back when having like a dvd collection was a thing i have one of those that is just all of my coffee stuff so it is about three feet high and about two feet wide and is just coffee making things coffee serving things uh yeah it's a lot um okay so i so she make... introduced you to yeah. decent coffee yeah mm-hmm. yeah like coffee Go that ahead. you make so I, on the I, spot I, that you know you don't just yeah, sort wander of, like, around and, and definitely yeah. talk over me because i Sorry. yeah it's it's pretty grim i'm gonna let you talk because i am like this so (laughs) you go wherever (laughs) you need to go and i won't try to make it linear as i'm Mm -hmm. desperately tempted to do it doesn't matter go uh yeah my my spouse she uh introduced me to coffee that you make sort of on the spot in the moment like you know that's a thing you do in the morning it's not just scoop it with a spoon and chuck it into the mr coffee uh, machine, which is what my parents did, uh, or my mom did. My dad uh, wasn't a coffee drinker. Um, okay. And so, you know, after a while, I got curious, like, why is this so much better? Well, if, you know, you grind it fresh, it doesn't lose a lot of the aromatic compounds. It doesn't, you know, gets it gets stale slower because the beans are whole. Um, you know, she explained oh, right. all, of, all of these things to me that she had used in her sales career uh, when she was working in sales at Williams-Sonoma. And uh, right. eventually I started getting curious and like going online and reading some more. Um, I had hit a patch of unemployment for a little while. And so I was just home all day by myself and 
uh, you can only apply for so many jobs. You can only apply for so many jobs before you sort of exhaust the opportunities for the day. And so I was like, well, I got to learn about something or I want to do something. Uh, so I really leaned yeah. into coffee as a hobby and so started learning about the different ways that you could make it and started acquiring all sorts of brewers. So for the most part, our home stuff is all of the pour ovary type of thing. So we have several French presses. I've got all of the like dripper cones that you put on top of a mug or on top of a carafe that you then pour the water Why manually over. Why different size? Why different size French presses? Are they because of different number of people or just did you get gifted things like when you start collecting unicorns? Uh, more the latter. Uh, all of ours are about the same size. <laughs> uh, so when, before we were married, we kind of had two of everything so that no matter whose house we were staying at, we had right. coffee stuff. And then when we got married and moved to California together, uh, that happened in the other order. We moved to California and then got married. Uh, but we still had kind of two of everything or two of a lot of things. And so right. uh, a lot of the seconds or sometimes the thirds uh, because we also both have the like the collector bug. So when there's like a thing we like, we tend oh, right. to want to get a lot of them or have the all the different iterations and versions of it. So we have a glass one and that we are really like gentle okay. and careful with. We have a stainless steel one that's like double walled, so it keeps the coffee hot oh. for hours in you know, because in Southern California okay. it gets so cold that we really have to worry about thermal <laughs> loss. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, right yeah, and then um, do you have a plastic one a for when you break the glass one yes yeah yeah <laughs> what else you got uh i have there is several... just so rangers oh, know yeah. there's a small <laughs> satellite delay on this particular mm. episode so it's not we're not awkwardly trying to talk to each other <laughs> we're made awkward because of the internet <laughs> Though we might talk awkwardly to each other if we were in the same room, Connor McLaughlin. Uh, so, but yes, please tell me what what other ways are there to prepare coffee besides Mister Coffee and a French press? Um, well, the funny thing is, is that every, every other way that there is to make coffee is just kind of a variation of those two things. Uh, and then, and then, sort of over here, you have espresso. <laughs> Uh, an espresso is its own thing, and I don't do espresso at home because I don't have the counter space, and working in public education does not afford <laughs> me the budget to do good espresso at home. Right, so, but um, wait, what makes good espresso? Uh, so good espresso really requires a, a really well-built machine that's going to make water temperature really specific. Like, put water at a very specific temperature and hold it there. And it's got to be able to push the water through the coffee at a relatively high degree of pressure. And a lot of the like, I've just prepping... had another cup of coffee delivered to me. Just so you know, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this, this is my, my, our cousins are in town. He's like, I'm going to Starbucks right now. And I was like, do whatever you want to do. And you no barking. Okay. Next. Okay. I, I so that, I if the I water has to that. be at a very specific level. <laughs> uh, it has to be at a very specific temperature and it's got to have like, it's got to have a strong enough pump to push the water through the coffee at a relatively high amount of pressure between like six and nine bars, which, oh. um, more, um, more physics oriented people than me, but it's some, somewhere between 150 and 180 foot pounds of pressure, uh, is how it's been explained to me. So it's a lot, like it's more than you can do as a human being. Wait. Okay, so here's here's the other thing. I it, it turns out as we go through at minute twelve, I these are the other things I know about coffee, mm -hmm. um, especially espresso. Which when we were kids, we would call it uh, Turkish, not Turkish, Armenian coffee because mm -hmm. we were full of rage. And mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, but that is espresso, right? Uh, no. S is Turkish of? Turkish coffee uh, is not? It's it's similar. Uh, so Turkish coffee is ground very like to make Turkish coffee or like the Turkish preparation of coffee or you know, to your point, the Armenian coffee, uh, understandable bit of rage. Um, right, right. Thank you. Thank you very uh, much. 
it's kind of like a French press in that like it's a pot that you pour coffee in and pour water over and then dispense the brewed sort of coffee out of it a little bit later. Um, espresso is made uh, really by like just having a ball of coffee and pushing water through it at such high pressures that the water also erodes the coffee and sort of makes something else out of it. Uh, the, the similarity oh. between them is that you grind the coffee like fantastically fine. Uh, so oh, a lot of people okay. would probably like see coffee ground for espresso and for uh, Turkish style coffee and say like, oh, they're pretty much the same thing. Um, when you get yeah. really deep into the weeds, but not you so. end up no. Yeah, when you get really deep into the weeds, you end up knowing that actually you grind Turkish coffee finer than you grind espresso, and that it would like Turkish uh, style coffee would actually choke a, an espresso machine pretty intensely. Oh, do we just get all stuck in it? Interesting. Yeah, because it would be because uh, it would yeah, be my, so my... fine that you couldn't get anything through it. Oh, weird. Okay, so and here's what uh, so what they do at Starbucks and other baristas will get, mm -hmm. they'll, uh, they'll go and they'll get the tick, 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 <laughs> espresso mm -hmm. falls into the cuppy thing. They mm -hmm. put it, they grab, uh, like a, like a pat down thing, a weight. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then they, they, they pound it down and mm -hmm. then they attach it to a machine, which has a pump that has a lot of pressure mm -hmm. and what it's doing because it's not putting a lot of water through it. No. Right? No, it's usually about like 30 to 45 milliliters, which is like two and a half ounces. Two to two yeah, and a half ounces. like little. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and, and, so and then they throw the, those grounds away. Mm -hmm. So that's where the pressure How comes in. Because, because you're using not a ton of coffee. It's usually about like 15 to 18 grams, unless you're in Italy where it can be as low as seven. Um, Cause they can okay. make like really, well, really strong, really right. small coffees. Um, but they okay. are taking a relatively little bit of coffee and pushing a relatively little bit of water through it. But because they're pushing it so hard, uh, all like all of that water takes a lot of coffee with it or takes a lot of the flavor with it. Whereas uh, in a Mr. Right, coffee, it must. It does. Yeah. Whereas with a Mr. Coffee, you've got a lot more coffee and you've got a lot more water, but because you're just sort of using just gravity to slowly let the water move through the coffee, you need more of it in order to get out of it all the good stuff and to make it taste sort of strong enough. Okay. Which is... Why with a press pot you can just let it sit mm -hmm. to whatever strength you like, like tea. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so um, when a lot of people talk about making coffee, they talk about the sort of three variables of it, and there's um, time, temperature, and turbulence. And so with espresso, uh, you uh, you have a lot of turbulence because you're like just smashing all of that water through it very very quickly. You still need a relatively high temperature because you're trying to do it very quickly. You know, your optimal espresso time is like 30 to 35 seconds to pull a shot. Um, and so uh, since your time is very short, you need a very high temperature and a lot of turbulence. Whereas with like a French press or when people are making cold brew, cold brew takes like 24 hours since you um, don't have a lot of turbulence because you're just letting it sit there. Um, and you're doing it with really low temperature water, like room temperature or fridge temperature, you need to expand that time like fantastically long in order to have it taste like right. anything other than just like dirty water. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was given I was given a cold brew kit when I during lockdown by my brother Phil. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, so I made cold brew and then I drank it like it was a pot of coffee. And uh, then I didn't sleep. So it was not my finest. I was not, it was not good. I had to put that one up high too. Uh, I mm -hmm. do have, what about the two 
I have a, qu- I have a quick digress into the, mm-hmm. you know, the metal where it's not a percolator, though I do have a question about that. Um, mm-hmm. It's 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 two pieces of of it's two bodies. Like you mm-hmm. unscrew the bottom and you put the you put the grounds on the bottom, and then you mm-hmm. put the water in the top and screw that together. And you, I don't know if you put it on the stove. Yeah, you put it on the stove. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is that yeah, called? So, I have uh, one of those. Uh, I do too. Uh, those are. I think that the, they're called a lot of different things, and depending on who you've talked to, they'll call it different things. But generally, uh, that one's called a mocha pot. Um, okay. Although uh, my friend who grew up in Mexico City uh, just called it something else, and I'd never heard anybody call it that before, and now I can't remember it. So I, I'm going to text her whenever we get done and be like, what was that word you used? Because it was a really helpful descriptor. Right. Um, but yeah, so that, okay. Is, and, and is it a that, percolator? Uh, so yes. Um, so basically the two ways of making coffee, if we were going to like distill them down into like two easy categorizations, uh, one is immersion and that's like a French press or cold brew. Cause all of the coffee is immersed in all of the water and it just hangs out there. Uh, and the other kind is percolation, which is any time that like the movement of water through the coffee is what does the work. And so with the mocha pot, yeah, you build up a bunch of pressure with the boiling water and then it sends it up through the coffee and you out the other end get the um, basically the water with some eroded coffee in it that makes it taste good. And so it's sort of like a reverse of the okay. Mr. Coffee thing. Instead of gravity pulling it through, you're yeah. using pressure to push it up. Right, right. I that's and do you ever think about like in old cowboy times how they didn't ever think like when the Mr. Coffee was invented, everyone was like, Oh, then I don't I can just pour hot water over it. I don't mm-hmm. have to get a fire going i could just make water hot that Mm -hmm. why wasn't i wonder why the pour over wasn't invented in the old west by cook uh yeah cookie (laughs) so i don't um this is actually a thing i don't know like the i know about the pour over thing being a thing in japan in like the 50s 60s 70s um and then it kind of went away in uh this i'm repeating information that somebody else told to me so it's possible i could get this wrong um because it was i'm just sort of gonna say we don't have a second source it's okay sure but it was that like in the 50s and 60s you know it was okay i'm gonna make one pot of coffee this i don't need a machine to do it we don't need all this electricity i can just boil a kettle and pour some water over some coffee and get a cup of coffee and then Um, in the eighties and nineties, when all of those folks had kids, those kids were like, well, that's what my parents do. So I want like Mr. Coffee or I want, you know, Folgers or whatever, because that's not what my parents do. Instant. Yes. And then when those folks had kids who are now like, you know, my age, (laughs) um, those are the folks who were like, oh, well, this stuff that my grandparents were doing was really interesting. And you like, and the craft of coffee kind of caught up. So in a lot of ways, a lot of things that were happening in Japan have sort of spread and other people have sort of, oh, wow, like what they were doing is really, really cool. Um, my, my wife, who uh, is uh, Japanese American, also from time to time when I'll be like talking about some coffee thing, she's like, you know, that's like Japanese teaware, right? Like, Japanese people have been doing what Ooh. you're talking about with tea for hundreds of years, right? And I was like, and... Typically, right. you know, as a as a white American who grew up in the Northeast, I'm mostly like, yes, uh, now that you say it, I very much understand. And it seems obvious. And also my uh, unawareness is very clear to me right now. It's patent that I grew up in this fishbowl. And thank you for pointing out this other fishbowl. And I can now see it for some reason because it's been pointed out and I am not a monster. But yeah. we all have to have, it's a learning curve. We all have to learn. Mm-hmm. So I get that. Yeah. Um, That's actually okay, one of the so things that I really love and there's percolation. about coffee. Yeah. Uh, just the thing you said that like, it's this, it's this ongoing learning curve that I think is really interesting. Like I can do it every day and I can be relatively good at right. it. Like I think I can make a decent cup of coffee 
at the snap of a finger. But there are also so many other things to like keep getting better with it or to like keep trying because you know, like I had a coffee earlier today from a place that I'd never had before. And I, now I'm like, oh, well, what else is there out there? Or what else is there to experience? And because it's so right. vast, there's always new things to learn. And I like being on that learning curve. Have you ever thought about going to like a, a, like a world tour of coffee plantations? Like I want to uh, go to Sumatra. I want to go... <laughs> to Africa and Ethiopia, and I want to see them um, being made. I do. Uh, I think that would be really cool. And some of my friends who work in coffee have done that. Um, the oh. thing that I'm that ha, uh, you know because they were working in the coffee industry, so they were going and seeing like what crops the places they were working were buying from. And um, the okay. thing that I am really hesitant about with that, or at least like the thing that keeps me from jumping at doing it for like my next vacation is that that's sort of become a, a thing. And so there are also a lot of people who are like being exploitative about it, um, which is oh. also a huge part of the history of coffee is that like, it's kind of really bound up in a lot of exploitation and uh, a lot of colonialism. Yeah, there's and it's not so, supportive. Um, They're just, just been exploited. To, and, like, yeah. okay, if I'm going to do that, I really want to do some research to make sure that, like, whatever money I'm spending is going to the people who are doing the hard work and that they're being compensated. And uh, because I'm not that much of a planner, uh, that sounds like a lot of work to plan a vacation. And so I'm like, you know, I'm just going to not do that <laughs> right. until I'm a little more certain that I can, like, participate right. ethically. Right. Just go on a whale watch. You're good. Yeah. You're right down there in San Diego, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah. I, okay. I have, go I ahead. have been to a bunch of, I have been to a bunch of the places that are considered some of the best coffee shops in the world. And one of the things I do whenever oh, really? I travel, which I do sort of often mostly for work, but I can usually like tag a day or two of vacation onto it if I'm you know good about planning. Uh, I will try to figure out like where are a couple of the really, really good coffee shops here so that I can like take a train ride or maybe like a little day trip to them. Who Who is saying the best coffee shops in the world? Are there obviously like wine or tea or cigars or whatever? There's somebody going, this is the finest coffee shop. Where? Name it. Where? Talk to me. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, you know, once I, when I was getting into coffee, my, my spouse gave me a book that was basically like an almanac of the best coffee shops on every continent. And I have little sticky notes on all of the pages with all of the ones I've been to with like a little note about when I went and okay. what I enjoyed about it. So this one, it's not sure. like a, these are the five best or this is the one best one, but it sort of says, okay, if you're in say Spain. And I've never been to any of the ones in Spain. I haven't yet gotten to go to Spain. But it's if you're in Spain, here's some really good ones in Barcelona. Here's some really good ones in like the Catalan region, which I think Barcelona might be in. I'm bad at geography. Um, but it lays out like all right. of the different kind of big cities in a lot of the countries and says, if you're here, you should check out like these four or five places. And when she gave me the book, I... Oh like right afterwards kind of went on a trip to New Zealand and ended up, uh, oh. and ended up like, Oh, Hey, this was in that book. And I really liked it. And I went through the ones for the U S and was like, yep. Been to that one, been to that one, been to that one, been to that one. Most of them are in the Bay area. <laughs> oh, are they? What's the, what's uh, the name of the book? the book? Uh, you know, it's in my office. Yeah, what's the name so of the I don't book? have it in, yeah. I, it's in my office and I don't have it in front okay. of me. Um, there's probably an updated an version of it and everybody can Google. Yeah. And it's probably, mm -hmm. you could Google uh, best coffee shops around the world and, mm -hmm. uh, Google will suggest a book. <laughs> somebody, somebody just came out with a like top 100. It might've been coffee roasters, but a lot of them have coffee shops attached to them. Um, in the world. And it was like a hotly debated thing in the coffee internet about like, 
who was left off and who was and who should have been higher and oh, yada, right, yada, right. yada. I think the cool, another one of the things I really like about coffee is that it's also really comes down to taste at the end. So I can talk about the things that I like and I enjoy. And actually, like the other person who lives in my apartment with me likes very different things. So sometimes it's, uh, well, is this a oh, thing that we're just going to enjoy? And if this is a thing that only I'm going to like, right. I can put this away for when I'm making coffee just for me and it'll be a me thing. But then if I'm making stuff just right, for right. her, I might do what, it this What way. are the notes that you're looking? Yeah, what so are the notes I, you're looking for? So I tend to like stuff that has a lot of like florality and a lot of like um, kind of fruit notes. So things that might ha be kind of punchy, like a strawberry or a green apple. Uh, things that are going to be oh, wow. not necessarily they... bitter, but they're going to be acidic in some of those ways, or things that might have a lot of are, tea like qualities. Now, are they in, are, is this just a coffee bean with that flavor or are they infused with that? Uh, a little bit of both, mostly the former. So one of the things that people have found okay. a bit, a bit more recently. And by recently, I maybe mean in the last like 15 to 20 years is that if you don't roast okay. coffee until it is like, black as tar um but if you roast it what would be pretty light maybe like to the color of cinnamon or a little bit darker that it retains a lot more okay. of the things that people talk about when they talk about wine you know you can taste a lot more of like the place it comes from and you can differentiate where it comes from a little bit differently because oh. you're not burning because you're not burning away all of the flavorful things that are in it so i tend to like stuff that is on the really right. really light side because there is so much more to experience from that um my spouse tends to like stuff that's a little bit darker a little bit more chocolatey a little bit more nutty flavored uh and i like that stuff too so it's like a, okay these are the things that we can enjoy together and these are some things that i might enjoy right, you are, mix them up and that are a little more a little more out there, a little bit more wild, a little bit more interesting. Uh, to the second part Are there of your brands? question. Oh, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Sort of. Yes. Uh, some of what, like, and this is like a very recent phenomenon. So this is maybe in the last like five or so years. What people have also realized is that when you're um, processing the coffee, so before it's even roasted, when they're picking it from the trees and they're getting it out of the out of the fruit that it's in because coffee is just the seeds of the plant dried out and roasted that when you're, I think I saw, it, yeah, I think I saw a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're washing it and when you're um, doing all of the processing to get it ready for roasting, if you say put fruit in there with it, that that will change the flavor characteristics as opposed oh, to like, if you store it, with mm -hmm. a fruit or a flower kind of yeah and so, and people are finding huh. that if you store it at different temperatures that'll affect it differently and if you store <sighs> it dry versus wet um so that's the sort of thing of the moment in a lot of coffee is that people are really doing a lot of experimentation with what you do before the coffee is roasted and how does that change or amplify? Cause for a lot of things, it doesn't necessarily change it, but it like turns it up a lot or it'll turn up certain aspects of right. it. Um, that, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to yeah. pull us real quick out of, <laughs> out of, out of the dork. Well, that we are very much in that I love. Uh, <laughs> but just to ask this, yeah. where do you, what do you, how do you, where do you get the, what are you drinking? Like, <laughs> where are you buying? It's, if it's not Folgers, are you, is there, is there a grocery store coffee that you will purchase? Um, so that's one of the great things about living it, especially in California, is that there's actually really good coffee at most grocery stores. Um, a lot of the grocery stores near me okay. actually carry local coffee roasters. So you can, like, I was at, sprouts earlier today which is a southern california chain for anybody who doesn't live in southern california 
Um, and the Sprouts that I go to has a little section of the coffee that's like San Diego coffee places. And they'll have bags that they went and picked up like down the road. Uh, so in a pinch, uh, that's great because it's pretty fresh. It's local. It's supporting local businesses, things like that. Uh, also, because I right. live in a major metropolitan Is there area. A s- right. There that are lo- lots of these places are also, I could also just go right to them and buy it from them. And because I've been kind of involved oh, wow. in going to coffee places and talking to owners and stuff, some of the people who own some of these places are also friends of mine. So I can text them and say, hey, um, I need to... I need to come pick something up. Like, can I, can I pop by or, um, you know, I really like that. Can I, can I have another bag? Yada, yada. Okay. So you would recommend you buy a locally roasted coffee and start there kind of in a, if, if you kind of want to try something super fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because if it's roasted locally, it doesn't have to travel very far you know the downside of a lot of grocery store and you know like buying it from target you can get actually like very high quality coffee at target the problem is you just you don't know how long it's been sitting there um it could be a month old it could be a year old it could have sat in a warehouse uh in a hundred degree heat and you wouldn't know that and it might not taste as good as you want it to whereas if you go to the same place you know and buy it directly from them uh, you can actually say, you know, when was this roasted? Is this a week old? Is this a month old? Um, has it, right. was this in the back, was this in and, the back under a blanket for a year? <laughs> right. It's, uh, all of my coffees in the freezer waiting mm-hmm. for me just cause it's coming from Vietnam. You're right. It's going to be a little older and, uh, it and, just makes me though. I do, uh, I, it's delicious. Mm-hmm. I like it. And it is very I nice. have, I have been allotted one um, one rail on the door of the freezer in my apartment. So when that gets full, it's because otherwise eat. you would write. Mm-hmm. I would take stop over buying, the whole... drink coffee, don't buy any more coffee. Yeah. Yes, um, the rule yeah. had to be made for a reason. Yes, mm-hmm. I get that. I get that. <laughs> what? Uh, so. Um, So you're buying it from local roasters or, or local do you, is there a country that you prefer? Uh, my favorite coffees have tended to be coffees from Ethiopia. Um, I, the best, some of the best coffees I've ever had have been Ethiopian coffees. Um, I have most consistently said, I, I love that. Um, so if like, if I go out somewhere that I've never been, and they have an Ethiopian coffee on the menu, that is usually the first thing that I'll get uh, as a way of trying to understand what they're doing. Uh, because I know that generally this is a okay. thing that I like and I've had a lot of success and enjoyment drinking these. And how do you like your coffee prepared? Are you drinking it black? Mm-hmm. Are you drinking it with any sort of uh, dairy or anything? Uh, I usually drink it black. Uh, because I'm mostly drinking like filter coffee, uh, 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 when I get an espresso, uh, that will be when I, uh, you know, get like a, like a latte or a cappuccino, uh, because they're delicious. Um, uh, but in my like day to day (laughs) coffee, I'm making at home or coffee I'm making at work. It's all filter coffee. So I, uh, just drink it black, which was really came about because I was trying Uh. to cut down on sugar. Um. And then realized like, oh, some of these are actually sweet by themselves. And, you know, they're not as sweet as a mouthful of sugar, but they're, you know, they're, but they're also not harsh (laughs) and bitter and they don't just taste like motor oil, like my mom's Folgers did. So I can enjoy them without having to adulterate them as much. Have you now here's now again, I'll just be, I'll let you talk about whatever you want in a minute, mm-hmm. but here are my questions. Uh, yeah. have you been to Italy? No. And have you had a tiny coffee in Italy and how long does it take you to drink? And are you supposed to drink it super slow? I have uh, a drinking problem and tend to drink everything super fast. Um, have not been to Italy. Um, 
though my friends who have have told me it would be particularly in Italy it would be very rude to like nurse a tiny coffee that it's called a shot for a reason oh uh, there that, you go oh good <laughs> um, i have been to places that you know uh while not in Italy sort of lean in that direction or sort of going for that kind of vibe um and they also tend to serve even their shots of espresso are like there's less in the cup so it's re- i like i would have a really hard time getting more than about two sips out of it just because it's such a tiny right you of just liquid. tend to just drink it and then you're done it's a tiny cup where mm-hmm. uh have you tried coffee in other countries yes uh, I drank a lot of coffee when I was in New Zealand. Uh, some of the best coffee I've ever had. Uh, oh, that's right. And then l- last winter, I was in Sweden uh, and uh, was with some friends Ooh. and said to a friend who lives in Sweden, you know, I'd really like to take a day trip over to Copenhagen. And she actually planned a walking tour of the city of Copenhagen that was routed around a bunch of coffee shops that she wanted to take me to. I'm glad it wasn't like chew tobacco, but, uh, the, uh, uh, <laughs> I had to go there. If your yeah. dork dumb is chewing tobacco, feel free to come on the show. Uh, but yeah. So were there, so was it delicious coffee? I mean, in Copenhagen, there's also, I've never been to Copenhagen, but wherever you go in Europe, they're making fresh pastries. Mm-hmm. It's happening. Yeah. It's one one of my favorite things about coffee. Sh- what do you think about coffee shop culture? What do you think about that? Um, that's one of the reasons that I like to go out so much or like to tag extra days on to like, oh, I'm somewhere. For, I'm in Chicago for a work thing. Can I dedicate a day to doing coffee stuff? Because I'm always really interested in what are folks doing in different places? What's the what are the cafes in? you know, Portland look like, what, a, what do the cafes in Florida look like? Right. Um, what is the, what is the coffee yeah, are place there, in my are dad's there favorite... town yeah. in, in like on the Gulf coast of Florida where there's like very little other than a Sam's club and some car dealerships, but, but there's a coffee shop. So what is it, what's it like? Like that's part of the fun is just seeing like, I... oh, how is it different here? I went to the town where Andy's parents grew up in Mississippi called New Albany, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And there was one coffee shop on the main street and they had an espresso machine, which was broken the first time I went there. (laughs) And uh, the next trip we went and I got, and I just got a latte. I was just like, I would like something else. And uh, cause we were staying at a Hampton Inn. And so uh, (laughs) I just wanted a decent cup of coffee. And so I got the latte and I turned to Andy and I said, if we lived in New Albany, Mississippi, I would live here in this room. And he said, we'll never live in New Albany, Mississippi, (laughs) but it was nice to visit. Mm -hmm. What are your favorite towns? Can you remember any of the specific greatest coffee shops? around the country that you've uh, been to, like in San Francisco, I'm going in two weeks. I'm going to San Francisco. Oh, and San Francisco has like a bajillion great coffee shops. Um, The one that I have been to in San Francisco that I enjoyed the most was called Verve. Um, And they have been doing kind of like, (laughs) like it's a great Verve. Yeah. Good for them. (laughs) And they have been doing really exciting, interesting coffee for a really long time. Uh, They, they've been around forever and ever and ever. Um, I still, I also have a soft spot for blue bottle and it like makes me very sad that they're now owned by Nestle and Nestle is the like kind of, it's like a comic book villain just of a, like an evil corporation, but in real yeah. life. Wait, is blue, is blue bottle, um, a coffee shop in, is it a kind of coffee? Like why would Nestle oh, buy yes. a coffee um, shop? So blue bottle started in Oakland, um, in the early two thousands and was one of the kind of like, was one of the people that influenced a lot of what like modern coffee, coffee culture is, um, a lot of it is kind of based on Blue Bottle, um, sort of like not just Blue Bottle, but they were one of like a handful of people that really like 
caused a shift in coffee culture in the U.S. And so Nestle, uh, seeing an opportunity, kind of said, like, you know, we would like to buy it. And it made huge waves in the coffee world because they paid something like, I think it was like $700 million or something like that for it. Um, just some astronomical right. amount. And the of people of Blue Bottle. Money. Yeah. And Blue Bottle was like, I don't know how to say no. Take yeah. it. We'll and start over. I, yeah. yeah. And, and the guy who founded it, um, he's a guy named James Freeman, like seems to be doing, like is still doing a lot of really cool and interesting things and still like is involved in coffee, but he's not, you know, he doesn't run a coffee business anymore. Now he is kind of like a spokesperson. Uh, in a really interesting way. Okay. Uh, so, uh, like, I have a soft spot for them. I really don't like giving my money to Nestle, so I try not to. But sometimes that's what there is unless you want to go to Starbucks. And I want to go to Starbucks even less than I want to give my money to Nestle. So <laughs> when that's the, when that's well, what, the bind that Here's my question about Blue Bottle. Yeah. Yes. It's a, is Blue Bottle an actual chain in San Francisco and Oakland? Uh, now it's a chain all over the world. So uh, there are tons oh, of Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. But it started in okay. Oakland. I've never, and then they I've moved never to heard of it. That's weird. I'm sure. I I know for a fact there are at least two in LA. But uh, if I remember correctly, you live like in the okay. valley. And I don't think that there are any near there. We just got a fills, Connor. Ah, we just got yeah. a fills. By the way, <laughs> I'm talking with uh, Connor McLaughlin. It's at Coffee with Dr. Connor. Coffee, C O F F E E, with W I T H, Dr. D R C O N O R. Uh, do you have a doctorate by any chance? I, I do. Not not a helpful kind. Ha, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> right. And well, and not in and probably not in coffee. But no. you get to be called Dr. Connor. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I have my a, I brother have a has a PhD. doctorate. Yes. And yeah, I have a, I have a PhD in leadership studies with a focus on leadership in higher education. Well, thank goodness. It's uh, yeah, I think he has a PhD in uh, urban studies or econ or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And he got it because my sister is a medical doctor and he, he, he didn't want her to be the only doctor. Uh, mm -hmm. That's right. We're petty. Uh, not we, I don't have a doctorate. I barely have a BA, you guys. It's plugging along. So here's what I want to know about the guy who, who sold Blue Bottle. I want him <laughs> to have figured out the worth of that company, doubled it, got it from Nestle, and then donated half of it to something like water treatment plants that Nestle wants to own. Because uh, what? Because Nestle is, they, they're, they're the devil. They are not good. Nestle mm. is not my favorite company. And there are many companies that are bad that I mm. go to. That's right. Uh, I do try to avoid Nestle companies <laughs> when possible just because they're cartoonishly evil. It is weird. Yes. Mm -hmm. They own water rights. I don't think anyone should get to own water rights. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a really, that's a really hard, uh, thing to dig yourself out of and they don't seem interested in sort of digging themselves out of that hole so right <laughs> right they're just like okay i am mr burns and i will i will laugh all the way to my grave and mm -hmm. then they uh they keep plugging along so yeah. okay so now we have we have new zealand that you've been to and sweden that you've been to have you ever been to mexico no uh i have been i have walked up to the wall <laughs> I've I, I've been all the way, but right. Well, I got off uh, in Cabo San Lucas once because uh, I was doing a cruise ship. Uh, but I really don't feel like I've been to Mexico. I feel like I've been to Cabo San Lucas, its own country, and uh, and that feels like I was in Boyle Heights here in Los Angeles. So it's not. It just feels like a neighborhood. Anyway, um, My, have you been to I Canada? Have... I have been to Canada. I uh, had some very wonderful coffee in Montreal. Uh, really, really want to... I'm told that I would love uh, Vancouver and Vancouver's cafe culture. It's one of the places my partner and I really, really want to go on vacation. Uh, yeah. Because we both... I've never been to... Really I've only been to Vancouver for a heartbeat. And see yeah. The other cities in Canada, which, which we're also told we would enjoy quite a lot. So, Yeah. 
sure. uh, really want to visit Japan. Capital of really Canada, to to, Ottawa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, really I've never been to Japan. Japan. Have never been to Japan. Uh, really want to go to Australia. Uh, Australia's cafe culture is supposed to be just truly amazing. Uh, I, I just want to travel. I want to go. I everywhere. went to Australia I, and I had a flat white for the first mm -hmm. time in Melbourne. That was the first mm -hmm. place I ever had a flat white. And I was like, oh, this is exactly how I like a latte. Because mm -hmm. that's what, I, as far as I can tell, it's less foamy, but it's yep. the good coffee. And then I get more coffee and not a lot of foam because that's not what I'm looking for. And if you were to if you were to ask an Aussie, they would tell you that is the first place that a flat white ever was. Um, there is a deep, deep argument between Kiwis in New Zealand and Aussies in Australia about who invented the flat white. And whoever, whatever country <laughs> you're in will tell you it was them. But a lot of it was kind of this response to those lattes of the 90s and the early aughts that were like a tiny bit of coffee a tiny bit of milk and a mountain of foam in a punch bowl that they were just yeah. like no i just want a flat yeah. white coffee i would just like to drink some coffee yes mm -hmm. a hard agree and i would like yeah. to thank uh the entire part of do i forget what that's called the antipodes i'm not pronouncing uh, the that right uh, uh uh, antipodes antipodes? <laughs> or an, uh, antipodes or and uh, like uh, or antipodean. Antipodean is Antipodean. like the adjective right. form of it. Yeah. I would All just like Jeopardy to thank my mom the people of me Melbourne. Watch is really paying off. Yes. Oh, exactly. No kidding. My mother in law is watching it right now. Um, okay. Uh, is there equipment that you have not explained to me? Cause I got to ask uh, all of my questions and you can have, you can talk again. So sorry. <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to be sorry. This was great. Um, I, mm -hmm. I, I think the only thing that I haven't sort of, or I haven't talked probably as much as I would is uh, the importance of the grinder and like grinding fresh. Um, having a grinder is, was the thing that like changed my coffee experience uh, just orders of magnitude more than anything else. Uh, being able to sort of grind okay. it fresh, have like, you know, very, very fresh coffee. Um, and that's usually Do you grind the thing it that per I, pot? Yes. Uh, I usually grind it per cup. So if I'm make it, like, I will make myself a cup of coffee in the morning. And then if I want another one, I will grind yeah. some more an hour later and do that. How many... How many beans is that? Is that two tablespoons? How do you know how many beans are in a cup? Uh, so uh, I weigh everything in grams uh, because, yes. uh, and again, I'm going to repeat something that somebody else said to me. So this is not an entirely original thought, but um, volume is not, it's, it's very hard to be repeatable. Whereas like weight, even across different coffees is, you know, 18 grams is 18 grams. And if it's 150 beans or 200 beans, you still have 18 grams of coffee. Uh, so I have a scale. Okay. Uh, and this, and when I bought my first coffee scale was when my partner started saying that I had gone off the deep end and had like outpaced wherever <laughs> she was. Um, right. Did but, you tell uh, her you were thinking about going into cocaine? No, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I, I weigh it out, uh, and I have kind of, I know how much coffee I want to put in. I know how much I want to get out and I, you know, brew with the appropriate ratios accordingly. And then I have the scale so that I can track how much coffee I'm putting in and how much water I'm putting in, uh, every time. Okay. So if you have 18 grams of coffee, how much water are you putting in? 300 milliliters. Which is about 10 ounces. Okay. And thank you very much. One 10 ounce cup of coffee coming at me. Uh, okay. I have um, a very old scale that might, that might grow, do uh, weight grams. Uh, I don't know if I'll do this. <laughs> it, that's okay. Um, but it's, uh, so um, I basically like had to learn the metric system for this um because out because most of the coffee drinking <laughs> world works in the metric system and so if you're reading anything yeah. from somebody who's not based in the u.s they might 
give you the conversion in a parentheses, but most of the time it's just these are the grams. This is the water temperature in Celsius. This is the these are the milliliters. Okay. You do the conversion, you lazy American. Nobody says Can that. Can you but. so it's like learning a new language, right? Right. Mm-hmm. No, but it's like learning a new language. Can you picture in your mind 300 milliliters? Can you picture in your mind 18 grams? Can you picture in your mind a meter? <laughs> Can um, you picture in your mind how warm it is when it's 41 degrees Celsius? So the temperature thing is the most recent thing. Like I have changed a lot of like the weather on my phone to Celsius to try and like learn how to have that conversation with friends across the world. Um, I can I can get pretty close to 18 grams of coffee. I've been like looking at 18 grams of coffee for a long time now. I'm okay at it. I can like <laughs> guess at about 300 <laughs> milliliters, but most of the time when I'm having to guess, I haven't had coffee, so I don't feel like it. And I'm like, there's a machine that will just do this for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do right, have right. like a. But I was just wondering, do you do? You... Oh, go ahead. I think you were about to ask me the question you, I was going to answer. I, I'm just wondering. If... Okay, well, here's the question: uh, Can you speak metric? to people who are are metric lovers or knowers instinctively Um, who are raised in metric mostly about coffee not not about much else like i said i'm still trying to teach myself the weather um i have a bunch of friends who live around the world who will say things like oh it's 20 degrees out and i'm like oh that sounds horrible are you and they're like no it's so hot we have the windows (laughs) open i'm like oh right because yeah because 20 celsius is very different than 20 20 fahrenheit um, right. So I'm, I'm trying it was 106 to learn. here yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I was I was talking to some friends of mine in the UK um, about uh, something else, uh, political. Yay! Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, but the uh, uh, but they, I was like, um, it's 106, and the blank look, and I went, "Hey Siri, <laughs> what is mm-hmm. 106 in Celsius?" And it turns out it's 41 degrees, which mm. is very, very warm, um, yeah. but not as warm as it could be. So, yeah. Yeah. So what would you I recommend have... people do? Yeah. I was just going to say, I can be like coffee. conversational around coffee in the metric system. Uh, that's yep. kind of the only part of my life where it's like imperative that I learn metric yeah. or like need to be conversational in it so i don't spend most of the rest of my life in metric although like i said I'm, I'm sort of trying to be a slightly better citizen of the world and like try to look at the weather in celsius uh right that's about it it just so it no, feels i guess it, is a it answer feels, to your question <laughs> <laughs> the short answer is no, but, yeah. uh, yeah, but we're all trying to, you know, cause it just seemed more exact, the metric system. I remember uh, them trying to teach it to me when I was a child. Mm-hmm. So, but yes, I'm a huge fan of whatever, whatever effort you're making. Um, uh, by the way, we're at about 56 minutes. Is there anything mm-hmm. you would like to tell the people of the dork forest about coffee that I have not grilled you about? Um, I maybe would just like to underline that, like, no matter where you live, there is probably a local business doing coffee where you live, and it would be really great to support them unless they are bad people in some other way. But as long as they are good people right. worth giving their money to, uh, it would be great to support your local, your local coffee shop because coffee shops yeah. are like an incredibly hard business to make any money in. Um, the returns on them are really minimal and people who work in coffee don't make a lot of money. So any patronage that good people who are trying to do something for the community uh, can get, I think is really important. And I think that actually like brings me to a question that you had asked me a, a while ago that I wandered away from about like cafe culture in that I still really appreciate that cafes are these like community gatherings places. And that's part of what excites me about getting to go to cafes all over the world, because I'm fortunate enough to get to travel sometimes is to see all the different ways that people come together and people socialize in these spaces over, you know, a coffee and a pastry or a coffee and a snack. Um, So yeah, just 
Yeah. Support local cafes, support local people. There's probably somebody in your town doing it and not making enough from it. And so anything you can do to support them is a good thing. Right. If you're going to spend $6 on a cup of coffee, you might as well go to the one that's locally owned instead of Starbucks. So true story. Uh, Cause they could use the six bucks probably uh, mm-hmm. more than uh, Starbucks is doing fine. Mm-hmm. And uh, they should pull out that logo used to have more boobs, the logo. <laughs> uh, but now they've zoomed in, <laughs> they've zoomed into just her face. <laughs> so um, I, I do like, I, ha- uh, I am a bit of the accident. Yep. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Please. Oh, I was just, I was going to say, you know, I had this really odd um, experience recently where I went to this place in San Diego that I thought was a local cafe. But as I was walking in, I was like, that font on your sign looks oddly familiar. Like, why do I recognize that? And I go in and I'm looking at the menu and the font on the menu looks familiar. And I like just couldn't figure out, I was having this like odd deja vu experience. And I start asking the barista about their coffee, just like, you know, where's it from? You know, what is it? Cause it just says coffee. And I, they, I don't remember what they said, but they said something that's like a lingo that you would only get if you were employed by Starbucks. Like this isn't a thing that anybody else would say except Starbucks people. And so I was like, wait a second. Okay. So did you just like come up through Starbucks and now you work here? And then I was like looking around and I was like, no, this is a Starbucks. It's just not Starbucks. Like the font on the sign was the Starbucks font. The food was a lot of the same kinds of food that is at Starbucks, but this place didn't say Starbucks anywhere on it. So I was either like, either y'all are like, are a Starbucks that's just not called a Starbucks or you're like somehow trying to copy Starbucks, which it feels like they're lawyered up enough to like get at you for that. So I'm like, it was just really right. bizarre to be in this, like, this is what Starbucks thinks a local right. cafe looks like. And it was just right? this sort of like uncanny so valley. Weird. Or like, it was a very like Stepford Wisey kind of thing <laughs> where it's like, it looks the same, but it's like, there's something just a hair off. And that hair is just enough to make it feel weird. Did you ha- did you just have to go, or did you just get a cup of coffee because you wanted a cup of coffee? Uh, well, it didn't click until after I had ordered, so I think I drank the coffee oh, right, right. and 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 sure. I don't know I don't know for sure because I'm not like I'm not a brain doctor, but um, the. I don't, so I don't know if the coffee was actually bad or if I was just so annoyed that I had been like tricked into going to Starbucks that I didn't (laughs) like it because of how annoyed I was. Right, Um, right. Well, and the experience is a whole experience, Connor. You know, it's not just the coffee, it's where you're having the coffee, the ambiance of the place, especially when you're in a cafe, you're just like, I'm the accidental tourist. So when I walk into a Starbucks in any city in the world, I'm just like, oh, this is actually quite soothing because I Mm -hmm. feel like I'm at home. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's, uh, but there's that. But yeah, um, it's a whole thing. Connor, it has been an hour. I appreciate how quickly you responded to my email. And this, this was fascinating. This was a delight. So thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you so um, much. This has been really fun. And it's Connor. Mc- Yay. Connor McLaughlin, you guys, it's at coffee with Dr. Connor, Dr. Doctor, uh, not doctor spelled out like Dr. Who. So it'll be in the notes. And, um, this has been a delight and Rangers, you know, the rules out there, take care of each other. Go for it. Hi, Adal. How was the show? Well, there's such a long pause. I don't know if it's good for Patrick or bad for Patrick or good for me or bad for you. Or... Oh, it's good for me. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy one of us is having a good time. This was an excellent episode of The Dork Forest. I, we're, I usually talk to Andy Ashcraft for a couple of minutes. We don't know how long we'll do it, though. This could be the last one. What? Uh, no. Right. Why? <laughs> because I have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I make her wait at the beginning before I say, hi, Adal, how was the show? And he's spelling Dal, D-A-H-L, by the way, because we went out for Indian food when we first were together. No, 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 that's not why. 
I thought that was why. No, no. The reason why is because I asked you on an email early on whether you slept like a burrito, <laughs> a sandwich, or a pizza. And you said that you sleep more like a doll. Oh, okay. <laughs> but not an Indian food doll. So why? No, you, no, spelled, yeah, yeah. D- you said D-A- you spelled it D-A-H-L. Oh, because interesting. we were talking about foods. Or you, I, was I, was using a food me- I was using a food metaphor and you were riffing. An email that we riffed in 2003 is right. the reason why 18, 20 years later. I call you doll. You call me doll. And I've called you doll ever since. Ever since. Hi, and doll. I made up a different narrative for that. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> this particular episode was about coffee, which oh, I yeah. enjoy. And you don't it's have true. any... You don't have any interest, no, though you no. will, if you're very thirsty, have a have a sip of my iced coffee. I want to want I want to like coffee. Oh no, but I it's don't. A, it's a gift that you don't, because uh, I remember when Maria Bamford went out with oh, what was his name, but he turned her on to iced coffee, and now she's addicted to cold brew. So uh, it's really for the best well, that it didn't happen. But this guy, totally Corey true. McLaughlin. Uh, Connor, Connor McLaughlin. I got, I got, I got. I think it's McLaughlin. I got so invested in his last name that I got both names wrong. Yes, Connor Connor, McLaughlin. Connor McLaughlin, because you have the piece of paper in front of you. I do, I do indeed. That's the log line. So, so this is what she writes. I write the show. That's right. And then, um, and then she has time code, and also. Um, tells um, tells us whether he got a shirt. Oh, right. Whether he wanted a Dork Forest t-shirt and coffee money, which he was and actually psyched money. to get. Yeah, yeah. Who's, um, who doesn't, who's going who's gonna to say no to 20 bucks? He has three press pots. He's got the press pot that they use carefully, the glass one. They have the plastic one just in case they break the glass one. And then they have uh, a thermal well, I think we have a pla- we have a glass and a plastic because they were a gift. Once you like something as much as Connor likes coffee, people give you things. <laughs> it's true. So that is true. He has some sort of weird thermal press pot that's metal that keeps it hot. Oh, that's or nice. Cold or that's something. That's actually very good. Yeah, that's a good. That seems like a good idea. And then he has all the different ways for pour over. Uh, sure. To do pour overs, and I don't believe he has a Mister Coffee. And uh, so we talked about he he mentioned a book that he later sent me. What it was? It was a Lonely Planet: The Twenty Five Best Coffee Places in the World. In the lonely, world, in wow. the world, All right. I believe. And I will have to say, and now we're going on a tour. And now, well. He's been to several. He's never, they went to New Zealand and he said he had an excellent cup of coffee in New Zealand. He explained why it's called a flat white in New Zealand and Australia. Okay. It was because of how much lattes were very, very popular, but there was too much foam and the people, and there's, and I guess there's a beef. There's a bit of rivalry. Flat means no foam? Easy foam, tiny row of foam, flat white. Yeah. So not a a latte as opposed to a fluffy white. Exactly. Fluffy okay. white would be a latte. And I like a flat white because I like more coffee than foam myself. Thank you very much. But both New Zealand and Australia claim to have invented the flat white. Just so you know. We and, can't tell them apart anyway. So what don't what so fine. Oh, Australia, New Zealand. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be able to. Uh, <laughs> I could be taught again. So and then what else? Um there was also it's it's how he knows the metric system now. He makes one cup of coffee at a time, unless he's making it for him and his partner, his, his wife. Ergo, and then, he, he now knows the metric system. Right, because he what, me, me, what, he measures out grams and liters. Oh, I see. Okay, and pours in. He he puts a certain amount of grams into the into the cone. Sure, a certain amount of liters into the cone. Okay, and then the perfect cup of coffee ensues. Okay. And then he also told me that I did not know this, that he, he will occasionally go to a, a small chain here in California called Blue Bottle. Okay. It's a San Francisco chain. But okay. He, then he told me that Nestle bought it. 
Oh. The Nestle Company bought Blue Bottle. A chain of cafes. Cafes. Coffee Co- shops. Yeah. Coffee shops. Weird. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, maybe. Cafe. Uh, not a coffee shop. Coffee shop, cafe, interchangeable words. I think cafe is French for coffee. Is it not? I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> There was a lot of that, by the way. There was a lot of okay. me not knowing uh, what what was happening, and then trying to, because he was plug and play. It was he was an amazing guest. That's great. Where, yeah, he That's just perfect. knew, and he has a lot of equipment. And um, the reason he doesn't make espresso at home is because he doesn't have the right equipment. But uh, very funny. Um, remember, uh, KP Anderson put in an espresso maker into his next to his fridge. Do you remember that? No. In his house? Okay. No. I do because I drink coffee. Okay. And uh, and he was so psyched about it. Right. But this is a great I episode. I don't drink coffee, so it was hmm. okay. less powerful. This has been a very long, very meandering bonus about this bon- episode with Connor. Bonus. It's a, it's a bonus. And the bonus, <laughs> uh, you should know, it's a Connor, C-O-N-O-R, with... Wait, no, it's Coffee with Dr. Connor. Yeah, Coffee, coffee at, at Coffee with Dr. Connor. And, and Dr. Connor spelled is spelled D-R. And yeah, D-R-C-O-N-O-R, one N, and Connor. He's got a doctorate. And coffee. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it was a really fun episode, so I had a good time, and I hope everyone else really liked it. Well, I did. And you know the rules out there. Take care of each other, Rangers. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. (laughs) My hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh, my God. Why don't we just call that as the end of the show?